Hey guys, on today's show, we're going to discuss the spark plug and fed half wave antenna. How will it perform? Let's find out right here, right now on ham radio for non techies. I first want to thank those who support Ham Radio for Non-Techies over on my Patreon channel. You guys are great. I appreciate the support for the channel and for everything that I do. If you'd like to become a supporter, please go to patreon.com forward slash HR4NT. Welcome back to another episode of Ham Radio for Non-Techies, where we try to simplify the ham radio hobby to get you to study for, pass, and get on the air as quickly as possible so you too can enjoy this great hobby. Hey guys, my name is Scott, my call sign is KI5MPL, and today we're going to be discussing this little tiny itty bitty antenna. This is the spark plug antenna. There's a small version like this one, and there's a larger version. So we got to go out in the field and get this thing all set up, so I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it. So let's pop it on my desktop real quick, and we'll uh, go through the specs. All right, guys, so... In looking at the spark plug antenna, it's a super lightweight and fed half wave antenna. It is resonant to, from 80 to 10 meters with no tuner. Uh, you will need some sort of an analyzer, like a rig expert or nano VNA or something like that to, you know, length, find a length, length of wire that makes it resonant and get the SWR down. But ultimately, it's going to be about what your radio says. So get it down as close as you can, plug it in, test it, try it out. Uh, suggested, I'm, I'm going to suggest you have multiple wires or traps if you want to use bands down from 40. So if you're doing like, you know, 10, 15, 17, 20, and 40, you'd have a wire for that, or maybe you have different wires for some of the, some of the higher bands. But, uh, you know, carrying around a bunch of wire for 60 and 80 meters and stuff like that, I don't know if I'd do that. I mean, I'd probably just stick with the, with the standard uh, most popular bands, which is like 20 and 40 and, you know, eventually... 10, 15, 17, and so forth. Um, the power on the small one is 50 watts single sideband and CW, and the large is 100 watts single sideband and CW. Uh, it, it does have, it's made with a 64 to 1 transformer. And I talked to the, I talked to Mike over at uh, Spark Plug Gear and uh, kind of, you know, had a really good talk with him for a little while and, and asked a bunch of different little questions. So it's 64 to 1 transformer. He makes these from all US sourced parts. So all the parts that are, that make up these things, he tries to get them here in the U.S. to build the top quality uh, little antennas. They are they do have a BNC connector on the end over here, and the other side here you have your little brass screw thingy that will allow you to put on your wire and screw that back down. Um, they are small. So so Spark Plug Gear is a smaller company. They're not a real big production. They don't have like a big, you know, assembly line where people are just cranking these things out all the time. So they're all handmade uh, one at a time. Uh, so he does small batches of these antennas, about five, I guess about five five at a time he does for each of these things. And the orders are, are coming in, so people are starting to get more and more uh, aware of his, uh, of his products. The last thing on here is recommended coax length. Uh, he says a minimum of 25 feet. And I, you know, he says there's no really no limit, but I'd, I'd honestly, I'd probably keep it below 75 feet at, at the max, uh, just to be just be on the safe side. So let's go back to my main cam. So we're gonna go out in the field and set this thing up. Like I said, it's a really really tough little uh, antenna. You're not gonna break it. I mean, I guess if, if you wanted to really try and hit it with a hammer, you could break it, but it's not gonna break very easily. Uh, at all, the outside is coated with epoxy on here. I think the inside, where the where the uh, capacitor is, has also got epoxy fill inside of that. Uh, so it's very, very well designed and very, very well built. And like I said, this thing will fit right in a shirt pocket. It is, it is itty bitty. You can see on my hand here. So really, really small. Without further ado, let's go out in the field, knock this thing out, get it hooked up, and see what it does. And I'll see you guys outside. All right, guys, so uh, for this review today, I'm back out at my uh, favorite park, Brazos Bend State Park, K2992. And we're just going to set up the uh, spark plug antenna and get that rocking and rolling. So I'll kind of show you what we got going on here. I'm going to uh, set the spark plug, get this wire run up. We'll use the buddy pole. And what my plan is, is I'm going to put up against that tree way back in there and I'll run the wire back here to this table. So I'm gonna go and get that set up 
All right, guys, so I've got the uh, spark plug set up like this. I got the uh, coax up against a little branch here, a little bungee cord around it. So this wire is going all the way back up that way, up to the DX Commander over there somewhere. And uh, looks like it's gonna work. But what I wanted to show you, what I wanted to show you is that on 20 meters right now, we're sitting at 1.3. So I've got this pretty well tuned. I'm gonna go ahead and check it out for the 40 meter band. I'm showing about a 1.7, so I could probably do a little bit more, take it down and, and maybe fine tune it a little bit. So I'm gonna give that a shot and I'll be right back. All right, so after doing a little bit of uh, adjustment, I just took like an inch and a half off the end of the wire there. I got the uh, 40 meter band down to 1.49. I could probably get a little bit lower, but I'm okay with these uh, readings for right now. I'm gonna go back and check, check 20 meters. Still at 1.34. All right, guys, so I spent the past about 15 minutes activating, but I did get the park activated. I'll show you the screen here. So you can see I got 10 activations. I started about 11 o'clock my time. It's now 11.17. So about 16, 17 minutes to start up. But uh, that was pretty good for an activation, I think, so far. I'm going to keep going here and see how many more I can get. I'm reaching out to a lot of people. I'm sticking on 20 meters at the moment, uh, but I'm, I'm reaching out to Tennessee, Indiana, a lot of the eastern states. I'm trying to get over to the western states here a little bit, but that, I guess it depends on propagation and other, other factors. Um, I think, you know, so far I'm pretty happy with the antenna. I think that if you wanted to have other bands, I would probably consider bringing out different lengths of wire. Like we said, I, I was showing about 3.3 3 to 1 SWR on, on 17 meters. So I'd probably want to bring out a wire that would be for like 17, 15, and 10 and have a separate wire like I have here for doing uh, 40 meters and 20 meters. It's a little bit of a bummer. I'm not sure if the 64 to 1 un, -un is, is what car the 64 to 1 transformer causes that. Um, it might be a question I should ask Mike when I talk to him next. But the fact of the matter is it does work. It seems to work fine. People are hearing me. I had one guy in uh, Indiana just now, or Tennessee, I believe it was, and he was about coming in about a 2 2 4 2 4, but he said he heard me at a 5 3. So it's it's definitely sending out and i just have you know little bits of issues here and there it can be multiple factors involved but i'm just gonna keep playing with it here but so far i'm pretty happy with the results of this so we'll keep in touch and i'll be right back so yeah like i said guys i had a successful activation out here i'm pretty happy with the antenna uh, i actually just picked up a guy over in nevada which is one of the states i needed and it was a park to park i uh, got him pretty clear so this antenna does work i am pretty happy with it um, I think that, uh, let me switch to back here. I think if you get this antenna, you won't be uh, disappointed with it. Now, I'm only running it at, at 10 watts. So you can bring this one up to 50 watts, or if you get the larger one, the larger one will go up to 100 watts. And as soon as I get, you know, my 100 watt in here, I'm going to probably bring out the uh, 7300 and, and test that out as well. So you might see another video from that. Uh, let me kind of show you here what I did with the setup. The uh, setup on this was pretty simple. I just grabbed my DX Commander Expedition Pole, and like I, I, I follow what uh, one of the things that Mike had done, where you get those little S-beaner things, and I drilled a hole in the middle of it, so I just got that kind of perched. You can't really see it from here, but it's kind of perched on that last little extension of that pole, and you see how it's kind of bending around up in the tree here. And I just got the wire going right back down to the, uh, to the antenna over here, and I'm running the, the coax. I want to be a little bit further away. You don't want your coax too short. So I'm generally with this antenna using a 50-foot uh, coax with it. I did try putting the choke on earlier, and for some reason, this time, having the choke on on the, on the antenna um, actually made it made it worse. It made the SWR worse, but it went from like 1.4, 1. 1. 1.4, like 1. 1.7. So I took it back off again, and uh, it went back down. 20 meters uh, stayed nice and low. Uh, like I said, 17 was still sitting at about three, three to one, and I don't really want to mess with those those kind of numbers. Even my radio was picking up at three to one, so I would probably consider having another wire out just to have to, to do 17. Um, you know, so I mean, it, it, there, is, there is one little. I mean, I don't know if you call it a drawback, but it's just something you got to kind of consider and think about when you're out here with these antennas. Uh, now, luckily, I do carry a slew of antennas in my pack, so my overall. Uh, opinion of this uh, of this antenna you know it's built like a little tank 
I'll leave links down below in this, but uh, we're going to go back into the studio and I'll do some little final thoughts and wrap up. So we're back in the studio, guys, and I ended the day with 16 contacts only because I got a two for park on the air activation over there in uh, Utah. Guy over in Utah, I tried to pick up the very last minute. It took a little while to get to him. He finally heard me. Uh, so my final thoughts. Um, this antenna, like I said, it's built like a little tank. You're not going to destroy it. It's super portable. And even while I was talking to Mike, you know, if you used it up on a, on a mountaintop somewhere on one or two watts and you're doing CW, that's going to open up a whole different world for you as opposed to being down and chasing on, on you know, on, on phone band or whatever and using 50 watts or 100 watts, whatever. I've only used this antenna so far with my 705. So I think another test I'd like to run and do like an amended uh, part of this review um, would be to do it on my 7300 or one of my other radios and just kind of see if I can get a little better performance by putting a little bit more power through it. Uh, but I think I really want to wait till the 100 watt version comes in. I know I can turn down the power on either either the radios and actually bring it down to 50 watts or a little below. But I think I really just want to I want to I want to have both antennas here so I can play with both of them and really get another uh, performance evaluation on those at a higher wattage. Uh, but you know, if you're looking for something that's uh, pretty cool, I don't see anything wrong with this antenna. And it's gonna it's gonna do what it says. You are gonna probably need to have some other wire out there. Now I think for like doing uh, 17 meters. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. I think you're looking about 28 or 25.8 feet of wire, give or take a little bit by tuning it. You know, I I don't uh, I don't think that's a bad thing. I, it, it's cool to have extra stuff out there, extra wire, and um, if you want to use other bands, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to have other other wire options with you. Now, I would not just go out with you know with just one single antenna of any kind of antenna. I don't care how good or bad it is. I'd probably have a multitude of antennas just to play around with different things. But that's just me. I, I like having different options when I'm out in the field, literally. Go over to sparkpluggear.com. Check out his site. Check out the things he's got offered, out, uh, the, uh, the diff different offers he has for uh, antennas, and see if one of these things might be a fit for you. I don't think you can go wrong with it. I mean, I think it's a good antenna, and I think for what it does and for what it is, it serves the purpose, all right? It, it's just, it, it works. I don't want to make this any longer than it's already been, so we're going to kind of cut it off here. When I get the next video shot, I'll do a, an update video with the higher power versions, and we'll take it on the, on the air and try it out then, and I'll give you another assessment of what I think of it at the higher powers. But just running on 10 watts, it did fine. I reached everywhere today. So I was pretty happy with those results, and I think you guys would probably benefit from this as well. So until then, guys... Uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. I've got a Patreon group. If you want to join and support the channel, check that out as well. But until then, this is Ham Raider for Non-Techies, and we are clear.